Hello and welcome everybody to our wellness webinar. We will get started in just about a minute here. Alrighty, hello and welcome to today's wellness webinar. Uh, today's topic is under pressure, manage stress and take control of your life. So my name is Anna Green and I am the Wellbeing Program Manager with Healthier Together. And I've got my awesome team here with me today to take you through our wellness webinar and a few housekeeping items before we get going. This uh, webinar will be recorded and we will be emailing the recording to all the attendees. The recording will be posted to our YouTube channel and we'll also share it on Yammer as well. So we'll get that sent out um, early next week so that you can access all of the information. You can access the slide deck, the recording, and uh, the live transcript is enabled. If the subtitles are annoying you, feel free to you know mute, minimize those. Um, and then if you have any questions throughout today's webinar, please answer, ask those questions in the chat feature. And if we cannot get to those questions at the end of today's webinar, we will be reaching out individually to those who uh, requested a question and we can make sure that everything gets answered. So any questions throughout, feel free to post in the chat. For those who are not familiar, Healthier Together is your one-stop shop for everything health and wellness. It is a hub that you can access um, on the website or on your phone, and you can uh, track your healthy habits, you can sync a device, you can join challenges, and you'll learn a little more about some upcoming events and challenges you can engage with later on. It's super easy to sign up. It is free to all employees and um, you can access it on the go as well. So before we get into today's content, we wanted to have a moment of reflection. Take a minute and think about your current stress levels. How are things going with your work and personal life? You taking this time today to attend today's webinar is a huge step towards taking care of your mind and your body. Hopefully you'll find a few helpful tips, some take homes and some techniques that you can use moving forward. I will now turn it over to Laura to talk about self-care. Thank you, Anna. My name is Laura and I'm one of the well-being specialists here for Medtronic and Healthier Together. Today, I will re just be reviewing self-care, why it matters, types and benefits of self-care and some stress relief exercises. Adding self-care to your life and helping others find it. In its simplest form, self-care is taking care of yourself so that you can be healthy enough to do all the things you need and want to accomplish in a day. There is a big misconception that self-care needs to cost a lot of time and money. This is simply not true. Self-care can take as little as five minutes, like a daily guided meditation, or it can be very quick and cost-free, like going for a walk or having a nice warm bubble bath. Let's first define self-care. Another misconception is that self-care and being selfish are both the same. The definitions of self-care and selfish are in fact very different. People often get confused between the two because they feel that self-care is being selfish, hence why it's important to understand what they each mean. Self-care can look different for each person. Some may be physical, some mental, others do small things in short periods of time, whereas some do larger things less frequently. So self-care, the definition, is a practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health well-being, happiness, in particular during periods of stress. While selfish is of, of a person, action, or motive lacking consideration for others concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. All right, 
So um, on kind of a side note to that, if you ever fly in an airplane and they say, put on your mask before you put on someone else's, that's not a selfish act. That is to make yourself healthy and capable before you help others. So I like to think of it that way as well. All right. Now a little poll question, um, I'm a better person when? So in the chat, I encourage you or to write it down, of course, if you don't feel comfortable, give examples of when you feel your best self. So uh, for example, I'm a better person when I get eight hours of sleep or more per night. Um, and also I'm a better person when I'm spending quality cuddle time with my kids. So we'll give you all just a minute here to put in the chat feature of when you are a better person, when. Let's take a look. Going outside, going for walks. Yes, exercise, sleep. Oh, playing with your granddaughter. When the temperature is above 80 degrees, I feel you. If you're in Minnesota, I feel you right now. <laughs> wow, some great ideas. Come to Florida, please, yes. Mm-hmm. Children, grandchildren, yes. Perfect, yes, keep going. Um, if you have some great ideas, keep going in the chat feature as well. Oh, right. So types of self-care. I want everyone to close your eyes if you can while we discover some perspectives of what types of self-care you may need to add into your life. A lot of people think self-care is just physical. Well, there's other um, perspectives that you can add as well. Physical, again, let's think of these questions. Do I honor my body with exercise and nutrition? What is my current stress level and how am I handling it? Do I sleep well? Emotional, is there anything I'm feeling fear or anxiety about today? Are my relationships healthy, life-giving and productive? Are there any experiences from my past that are negatively leaking into my leadership? Mental, what issues, topics and challenges receive most of my mental energy? What skill do I need to learn? What am I doing to get wiser? Spiritual, is my spiritual life a priority to me? Financial, is my spending aligning with my income and priorities? Is there anything I need to stop, change, or start spending money on? This will give you a better perspective on what habits or tendencies you might want to adjust to your self-care. All right, now we'll dive quickly into benefits of self-care. Do you ever feel drained at the end of the day to the extent that you feel you have nothing left to give to your family and friends? Do you find yourself snapping or yelling at your spouse or children and then feeling awful afterwards? If so, chances are that you are out of balance. It may be a sign that your own needs are not being met. Maybe basic needs, needs for rest, support, or love. Now, balance, feeling balance, the number one thing that I talked about here. Again, if you ever feel like you're just on edge or just really snippy, your balance is going to be off. So when you practice that self-care, you are more easily balanced with your emotions. You have an improved mood and energy level, very much the same, similar to balance, feeling balanced. Better productivity. When you learn how to say no to things that overextend you and start making time for things that matter more, you slow life down in a wonderful way. This brings your goals into sharper focus and helps you concentrate on what you're doing. Improved resistance to disease, sickness, illnesses. There is evidence that most self-care activities activate your parasympathetic nervous system. What this is, is that your body goes into a restful mode, helping it to fortify its immune system. So with better self-care often comes fewer colds, cases of flu and upset stomachs. 
and we have enhanced self-esteem. When you regularly carve out time that's only about being good to yourself and meeting your own needs, you send a positive message to your subconscious. Specifically, you treat yourself like you matter and have intrinsic value. This could go a long way toward um, discouraging negative self-talk and your critical inner voice. And lastly, you have more to give. When you're good to yourself, you might think you're being selfish. In truth, self-care gives you the resources you need to be compassionate to others as well. Giving compassion is a bit like filling a bucket. You can't fill someone else's if you don't have enough of your own. All right, so some quick um, stress relief exercises, some mindful techniques. We have a few here. We have meditation, grounding, gratitude, reflection, positive self-affirmations. And so um, I, at the end there, my coworkers will talk about what we have to offer to you. We have meditations live with me every Tuesday and Thursday. So those are guided meditations. And most of these other ones that you see is just to help settle your mind and to quiet the noise and quiet the stress around you. And I guarantee you, you'll feel a lot better when um, you practice some of these mindful techniques. And of course, the physical techniques. A lot of you said in the chat feature that you go for nature walks, you go outside, you exercise. Um, I didn't see too many people talking about nutrition or self-massage, but those are just added ones as well. And I'm sure that there is a, a whole magnitude of other physical techniques you could try, but here are some ones that we suggest. All right, and then on to Kyle. Thank you, Laura. So after hearing from Laura, you might already have some takeaways on what you might do or different techniques uh, you will include in your life to reduce stress or incorporate self-care. But what if you don't exactly know what the cause of your stress is? What if the techniques you've tried don't seem like they're working? This is where the seven F's wheel is an excellent evaluation tool to give you some insight into specific areas that might be responsible for your mood and tone you take to work and bring home. Myself and the rest of the Healthier Together team has had the opportunity and privilege to participate in this activity a couple different times led by a gentleman named Paul Botts. Much of what I will be sharing with you today comes from how he discusses and explains the seven Fs. If you are interested in hearing him speak more to the seven Fs, and even how he connects it to what he calls the dark noise in our lives, use the resource links to view his presentation during his Good Leadership Breakfast series. Today, we are going to focus on using the wheel to evaluate our self-care needs. Hopefully, some of you downloaded the attachment to follow along. If not, we will put the PDF link in the chat right now, uh, and, and you can download it um, for use uh, while we go through this exercise. Uh, so yes, I encourage you, and Anna, if you can, I'm having some issues with uh, the Zoom chat, so I don't know if I'll be able to, I might be, but oh, yes, no issues with Zoom chat. So yes, link is there, um, and it is a fillable PDF, so you might uh, need to enable all features or do what you need to to be able to uh, click the boxes and utilize it to its full capacity. Um, but if you prefer, you can do more of a mental self-reflection, um, but I definitely encourage you to, to uh, fill out the wheel um, along with me. So we use this to determine how the seven aspects or seven Fs flow throughout our lives in relation to our personal leadership. The seven Fs are faith, family, finance, fitness, friends, fun, and future. Each F has a spoke from the center to the outer portion of the wheel. The spoke has the number, a rating of one means it couldn't be any worse right now, and 10 being it couldn't be any better. As we move around the, the wheel from faith to future, we circle the number that represents where we are at for each life force. Let's now fill out the wheels together. 
You may have read the definitions for each F, but I will walk you through them a little bit more specifically as we move forward. As you're filling this out, be honest with yourself and give yourself fair ratings as we go through each of the seven Fs. So hopefully, like I said, you have this up on your screen or even if you just create a wheel yourself um, or that mental, uh, that mental image. So we start with faith. Faith is not about who you worship or how you worship or if you do worship. Faith asks, how satisfied are you with your spiritual life? When the Healthier Together team has participated in Paul's presentation, he says to consider what the ancient Chinese and Egyptians figured out 4,000 years ago, the strong connection between mind, body, and spirit. Faith is the spirit. How satisfied are you with your spiritual life, one through 10? Next is family. How satisfied are you with your family life? Now, we've been probably spending a lot of time with our families over the last couple of years, so we'll see how this uh, fares for everybody. But how satisfied are you with your loved ones who share a common sense of home? One being it couldn't get any better, or uh, one being it couldn't get any worse, uh, and 10 being it couldn't get any better. Finances. Finances is... Um, or when it comes to evaluating the aspect of finances, it's not about how much money you have in your pocket or how much money in your portfolio. It's how well does your money fund your priorities. Now on to fitness. When it comes to fitness, um, it's uh, this category always seems to make people chuckle a little bit, uh, which is okay. Um, as you see me filling this out, my rating for myself might surprise you. Uh, but first, understand that fitness is not specifically, do you work out or exercise enough? This F is more all-encompassing. Exercise, nutrition, your biometrics. Ask yourself, how is the health of your whole body? How satisfied are you with that? And as I mark down my number, the... Uh, <laughs> the Easter candy and snacks. So moving into friends, these are the people who share in, your, in our joys and disappointments. Not if you have friends or if you see your friends enough. One through 10, how satisfied are you with the people who share your joys and disappointments? Fun. Fun is the part of life that is playful and joyful. For me, I consider the satisfaction of my hobbies and activities. Woodworking, sporting clay shooting, video games, board games with my wife. Um, now that it's becoming a little bit nicer outside, I know we still got a little chill here in Minnesota, but the birds are out. So bird watching, um, vegetable garden preparations, camping. So again, one couldn't be any worse. Ten couldn't be any better. And lastly, future. Future is a satisfaction with the hope that you have for yourself and for others. Again, future is the satisfaction with the hope you have for yourself and for others. As you finish your wheel, not only take note of your rankings for each F, but also the shape of the wheel. A nice finish to really see is to connect the dots and really represent the shape of your wheel. Ask yourself, does my wheel or would my wheel roll efficiently or optimally? Here are my two wheels, today's wheel on the left and the past wheel on the right. The idea is that your wheel rolls. I like to add that your wheel should roll efficiently and optimally but that is not always easy. Here's why. In all fairness, if you marked a three for all seven aspects, you would create a wheel that rolls. But a three is a low satisfaction score 
and that wheel won't move efficiently or cover the distance you want. In physics, the wheel is a symbol of momentum and a wide open wheel creates its own energy. Having a wide open wheel can create positivity and less stress in your life, positive perspectives and mindsets, productivity, how you manage your stress and take control of your life. As you see from my wheels, I'm not perfect. There are areas that I have had to work on to encourage growth. Take fitness as the example. Some may, um, may say not a great improvement from November of last year to April to now. My four at the time reflected lack of exercise consistently, poor nutrition due to snacking and eating out, and uh, wasn't liking the number I saw on the scale. Visually seeing this encouraged change, encouraged action. So. I asked Anna if I could teach one to two more times a week on our YouTube channel. I went for walks with my wife at least once a week and um, made more meals at home. Now here in April, April, my satisfaction within the fitness aspect has increased because I've established a better routine for myself um, and just that overall work and effort in that area. I'm not at a 10 yet, but if I continue on this path, I will continue widening my wheel, making it roll as optimal as optimal as possible. So before I hand it uh, over to Anna, I want to encourage you to keep your wheel visible for yourself as a reminder of where you are at right now. Use some of the techniques that Laura shared about self-care uh, to work on one or two of your, your Fs and then evaluate yourself again. Take note that due to some life circumstances, certain areas might decrease compared to before, which is okay. I will end with this quote from Paul Botts. We are 100% responsible for the mood and tone we take to work and bring home. Blending the seven Fs helps us live with less stress and less fear. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kyle. I was just looking at my wheel and my wheel is, it's a circle, but it's rolling very small and very slowly. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, picking an area to start growing. So as we transition into uh, managing your pressure, taking control of the stressors in your life, I'll first kind of define what stress is and then go over a few different definitions and some ways that you can continue to take action. So what does stress look like? Stress is the accumulation of a series of stressors or pressure in your life. The purpose of the body's biological response to stress was to let us know that we're in danger. It activates our flight or fight response in order to help us survive in any given situation. An example of physical stress response could be, uh, you see a car on the freeway swerve in front of you and you have to swerve out of the way to avoid a, a car accident. The stress response in the body could be your heart rate spikes, your adrenaline is pumping, suddenly your body feels wired and it's ready to react. It can feel pretty intense in that situation, especially if you're flying down the freeway. And afterwards, you might feel kind of gross. I always get like this tingly feeling after <laughs> like something on the road like that, or I feel uncomfortable. Other physical stressors in our life can be lack of sleep, unsupportive habits, chronic conditions that inhibit our bodies to a body's ability to function optimally. Some emotional stressors may be feelings of resentment, fear, frustration, sadness, anger, or grief. Some examples of cognitive or mental stressors may be information overload, accelerated sense of time, worry, guilt, shame, jealousy, resistance, or self-criticism. These are all thoughts and emotions that we may experience that can affect our perception of stress. Something I'd like to note that stress isn't always bad. Exercise is stress on the body. And that is good for you in the end because our body adapts and makes those physiological changes to improve our fitness. But chronic uncontrolled accumulation of stressors 
can have a large impact on your body and is a starting point for many chronic conditions and illnesses can develop. And this can look different from person to person. As stress translates into our daily life, we might not even notice certain stressors. Now, the terms that you're seeing here um, are typically very interchangeable. They're all very similar. They all have slightly different meanings. And something I've noticed over the past two to three years are the solutions for stress and pressure. Everyone is told to, like Laura mentioned, practice self-care, take a break, use your PTO, volunteer, fill your bucket. All of those are amazing techniques that Laura highlighted with self-care, grounding, journaling, breathing techniques. All of these are incredibly beneficial. But what most people leave out and what Kyle was alluding to as well is that we sometimes forget to then manage the stressors or the pressure we're experiencing that got you to the place you're at, that got you to the chronic stress, the burnt out situation in the first place. So stress is the body's physiological response to stressors. Those stressors are the demands placed on us. And pressure is how the stress is perceived. And burnout is complex and it includes all of those. So imagine you have a pipe burst in your house and water is spraying everywhere. This can be a crazy situation and the body immediately goes into our stress response. Now I bet that your first instinct, your first initial reaction isn't to run to your journal or to go on a mindfulness walk or to do a guided meditation as there's water spraying around your house. Your first response is to turn off the water. You're trying to turn down the pressure, plugging the leak, uh, reducing the nozzle of the water pressure, all sorts of things like that. Your work, your life, and everything you experience throughout the day works that same way. You have to turn down the water pressure, shut off the valve in some way, and then you'll have space in your life to practice the self-care. You need to find that balance between taking care of your body while simultaneously working to find a solution to fight off those very stressors that are setting you back. Now we went over what stress may look like in the body, and now I would like to highlight pressure. Pressure can look different uh, for each person because we all have different values, we all have different stressors, different demands. An example of pressure is a situation in which you perceive that something is at stake. It's dependent on the outcome of your performance. Pressure is what we feel when something is important to us. We know we need to perform or deliver something. We experience stress when we feel like there's too many demands on us. And then we feel overwhelmed and we're unable to respond appropriately or cope with whatever, is, whatever it is that we're dealing with. Now this over time leads to that state of burnout, the mental and physical exhaustion due to our chronic stress. Nobody likes to be in this situation. And maybe as you are working through the seven Fs, you may have found some areas that you could start to focus on. Another resource that we have for you here is the manage your pressure worksheet. Now, this is linked in the bottom of this slide, and once you receive the slide deck, you'll be able to download this PDF. It's fillable if you wanted to you know, work on it on your computer, or you can print it off and fill it out on your own. I'll walk you through an example way that you could uh, start to manage your pressure, and then afterwards, our take home, our homework for you is to work through this on a particular event. So you may or may not have seen a worksheet similar to this in the past. I encourage you to think through the current stressors that you're experiencing in your life because they may be different than the last time you did an activity like this. Kyle's seven Fs from uh, November are vastly different than how they are now in April. At different times in our life, there's different things that are adding that uh, added pressure to our lives. So this worksheet is a great way to walk you through and plan out those action steps for a situation or event that is stressful to you. Kyle gave the example of fitness and that's an area that he wanted to work on. 
And so he made those action steps. So hopefully this worksheet can help you uh, determine what those action steps could be. It's easy to sit back and say, this is completely out of my control. I'm so stressed, I just can't do it anymore. So hopefully this provides you with the opportunity to see what aspects of stressful situations you could possibly control. This will help you hopefully then turn down the water pressure of that leak in your house. This will help your self-care, your vacations, your walks and exercise be that much more impactful. So I included a few snips of what the worksheet looks like. Uh, so the first step is to describe an event or situation that is stressful to you. I gave a few examples such as too many meetings with little time to accomplish tax, tasks, uh, draining relationships, maybe taking care of family, car problems, house upkeep. So think to yourself as you're filling this out, and you can even think now, what is a situation right now in your life that is stressful to you? And then the next step is list three to five reasons that that situation causes you stress. So what about it makes it stressful for you? And how does that make you feel physically and mentally? So what are the sensations that you're feeling in your body, in your mind, those emotions, thoughts, and feelings that causes you stress? How does it feel? And then the next step is to list three to five steps that you can take to reduce the pressure. So I gave the example, if you feel like maybe your workload is too much or you have too many meetings and not enough time to accomplish your day-to-day -day tasks, maybe contact your manager to discuss additional solutions. Uh, you could work on some time management skills. Maybe if you have a stressful or toxic relationship, you could reach out and set a clear, a clear communication plan, or you could set some boundaries. Now, everyone's situations will look completely different. So what works for me as an action step may not work for you. The goal is to think introspectively and determine what it is that you can control in this situation and how can you possibly reduce that pressure. And then lastly, describe how you would feel if you manage the pressure by following those steps. So you have this stressful situation, you take those steps, what would it feel like in your perfect world? How would you go about your day? So I encourage you once you have this slide deck in front of you is to click on the link and download the worksheet and try it out for yourself. Hopefully you're able to look at your situation in a new light and start making progress towards taking care of what matters most. So I'll now turn things over to our newest Healthier Together team member, Isaac, and he will be sharing some upcoming events and opportunities. All right. <clears throat> so yes, I am the newest member. My name is Isaac. This is exciting times here. So. Uh, what are some events and opportunities uh, to get our wheels more balanced and bigger throughout the month of May? Uh, there are a variety of ways uh, you can engage with Healthier Together throughout this month. Uh, registration is open for the Global Mindfulness Challenge. Track your mindful minutes each day of the challenge and learn steps, steps to de-stress, breathe, slow down along the way. Once you have access to the slide deck, please come back to the slide and check out our videos and links to add invites to your calendar. Uh, you can continue your progress with the mindfulness challenge and join the Life Balance ha Healthy Habit Challenge May 16th through the 22nd. Uh, track the healthy habit five out of the seven days and earn a bonus Healthier Together points. So good stuff there. Uh, we've created a tip sheet and video for some ideas to incorporate balance into your life as well. And then uh, be sure to join our next wellness webinar on family well-being, May 26th. Uh, save the date by clicking on add your calendar. And in general, it's better to any of these like weekly things that are coming up weekly live offerings. Uh, we've heard a lot of feedback from uh, employees saying that if they put these things on their calendar, they're much more likely to do these things throughout the week and whatnot. 
So, um, so yeah, our our live weekly offerings, we have um, guided meditations. They're a great opportunity to focus on a variety of topics. Don't forget to track those mindful minutes for meditations for the Global Mindfulness Challenge. Our flex breaks led by our beloved Kyle. Uh, he does short guided uh, stretching sessions. Make your, and your uh, trust me, your body will feel much better uh, just for those 15 minutes by doing those stretches. Uh, fit breaks are just quick 10 to 15 minute low impact, uh, office friendly, no equipment needed or anything like that, the workouts that we do. Uh, and those are, as you can see, when those, all these are, all these take place. Uh, and then we have a huge library of over 900 uh, 30 to 45 minute group exercise classes on our YouTube channel. You can watch on demand. Uh, see if you can make it live uh, every day at noon, or sorry, not every day at noon, but Monday through Thursday. And these classes range from yoga, Pilates, and bar to step, kickboxing, strength, and boot camp. So a lot of opportunities to stay active and stress free throughout the month of May. And we'll turn it over to Kyle. Thanks, Isaac. I don't know if I've ever had anybody uh, call me or use the word the word beloved before. That's a first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, a lot of great opportunities and even our ongoing virtual offerings that Isaac said. Um, but yeah, great opportunities and events that are upcoming um, in May. Uh, May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, so take advantage of some of those offerings. And like, I, and like Isaac was uh, saying, um, you know, even the virtual, those ongoing ones that you can have on your calendar on a regular basis. We hope that you found the information today useful, helpful, maybe insightful or actionable. Self-care techniques like grounding, journaling, breathing exercises, great resources to evaluate the aspects in your life that might be causing your stress or pressure or not allowing your wheel to roll. We'd love to hear one takeaway you have from today's webinar. As you do so, don't forget you can earn Healthier Together reward points for attending. When you receive the recording and the slide deck, come back to the slide and click the link. Be sure if you haven't already to join our Yammer community for reminders and news of upcoming Healthier Together resources and events. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you do have uh, specific questions or want some direct guidance, feel free to reach out to Laura, Anna, Isaac, or myself. Uh, but again, yeah, one takeaway uh, before you leave, if you'd like to in, throw it in chat, we'd love to see what you learned, what you're taking away from this. Uh, but yeah, that concludes uh, this webinar, Under Pressure, uh, Managing Stress and Taking Control of Your Life. Thanks everyone for being here uh, and have a great day. We do have some questions in the chat that I'll just go ahead and address a few of those now. So I received one asking, uh, would you have any advice about stress that we are creating ourselves by anticipating a stressful situation? I know I can get into that sort of cycle. I was doing that, you know, even before today's webinar, I forgot my computer charger. I was worried about, you know, making sure we present well, all sorts of things like that. And that can create that added stress. I think that's a perfect opportunity um, to take a moment, close your eyes and just take three deep breaths. Uh, some people may find breathing to be um, a triggering exercise. So if that's you, um, maybe you can practice a different form of mindfulness, but um, I found it really beneficial to, if I'm uh, feeling stressed about a situation to just take a moment, close my eyes, take three deep breaths, feel my belly expand on my inhale, feel it fall on the exhale. And that can be really useful. Another tip would be grounding. So you take an item nearby. So I'll just use my phone, for example, and you try to examine every little aspect of that object that you're holding. What does it look like? What are the textures? Uh, how does it feel? Does it have a smell? Could you possibly taste it? And that's another great technique to really zoom in and you can then start to forget about 
the things that were worrying you in the first place. Uh, we had another question, uh, where to find the info to add the offerings or the challenges to your calendar. Uh, once you have the slide deck, you'll be able to click add to calendar and download the invites straight from there. If you are presenting to your team or you're you know, leading a summit, anything like that, and you would like some of these slides to include in your slide decks for your teams, um, just shoot me an email, Anna Green, and uh, you, I'll send you the slides so that you can include the weekly live offerings, maybe in your weekly team meeting if you wanted to you know, plug a little bit for your team. I'm happy to send over the PowerPoint to you. Um, I think that's the few questions that I saw right away. Uh, if there's any other questions, we will we'll take a look at the chat afterwards and we'll address any of those that we noticed. But thank um, you all so much for joining. Yeah, Kyle, do you have sorry, something? Sorry, Anna. Yeah, you, you typically, um, after the recording is, is completed, um, you usually send out to all the participants the recording, the slide deck, deck within like at least three to four days, if not sooner. Yeah, so I will send the slide deck and the recording on Monday. I'm taking off for a vacation starting in about 30 minutes. So we'll send the slide deck and the recording on Monday. Uh, and I email it to all attendees. If you notice you don't see anything by Monday afternoon, um, just shoot me a message and I'll make sure I get that sent over to you. Great, Anna, thank you for that. And then enjoy your vacation. I will drop you an email, but you can respond next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining. And we'll see you uh, in May for our next wellness webinar. Thank you, awesome session. Thank you, everybody.